Hello, everybody, and welcome again to IHLS InnoTech International Conference. In this segment, we'll talk about innovation and space. We have a very distinguished panel here, and I'll ask you, um, gentlemen, please introduce yourselves briefly by way of sitting. Raz, let's start with you. I'm Raz. I am the CEO of NSL.com. We build small satellites with expandable antennas on it uh, to provide uh, high throughput communication from space. Interesting. Talin Bar. Hello, I'm from uh, Excalibur Almaz and uh, also from uh, DMARS, which is a Mars uh, simulation center. Yossi? I'm Yossi Yamin from Space Pharma. We are building a miniaturized laboratory to provide research and production in orbit and to improve our life here on Earth for the pharmaceutical community. Oh, you can uh, sell this to the small satellites over there across the table. Uh, Moshe? Moshe Schneid former Chief Intelligence Officer in the IDF. I'm representing ELTA from the IDI, Israeli Aerospace Industry. And Ron. Ron, Ron Nathanson, Head of Innovation and Country Branding in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Chairperson of uh, Innovation Channel in the conference. Great, thank you. And uh, we'll keep it on a first name basis from now on with your permission. Uh, Tal Inbar. Um, I'll give you the right of first question. Go ahead. Well, this is a privilege, but um, I, I would like to ask uh, any, any, anybody from the panel, what is the major challenge and the obstacles that uh, you are facing today in light of COVID-19 and in light of uh, uh, doing business in space? Moshe, let's start with you. Well, one of the things that we figured out in the past few years is that we can take many technologies from the a military side that used to be owned by governments and turn them into commercial technologies that can be used by any commercial company. For example, um, object detection, classification, change detection that we can do from space for purposes of a battlefield can be used for purposes of insurance, of construction building, and other things. The main challenge during the COVID, which we're going through in the past few months, is meeting potential clients and, and uh, going out with these ideas, even though it doesn't stop the development because the development is going on all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see challenges past year. The main challenge is to be able to fly overseas as far as the launches are not taking place in it from Israel. It's, it's easier to fly to space. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, it is a very uh, complicated situation to transfer the payloads and the satellites from Israel to Europe, from Europe to the launch site. Uh, we experienced, uh, uh, first of all, it costs much higher than we anticipated before because technicians and other laborants had to, you know, to stay longer, to evacuate and, and to, uh, to lock down, as, as we like to say. And uh, then uh, to be able to, to reach the client and to, to be on site, which is... That's to make normal business. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's terrible. It's very hard these days. Raz, uh, let's go back to space and what's mm -hmm. happening. Uh, give us an overview of what's happening, the race to space in terms of technologies, in terms of companies, and so forth. So space has always been the dream of uh, civilization. Uh, it's always the cutting edge of technology. Um, but yet it, it belongs to what's called deep, deep technology, which means that uh, in order to develop things for space, you usually needed a lot of time and uh, um, a lot of uh, funding for that. And that's have been changing for the past uh, 20 years when new space was introduced. So today the race to space is uh, ever uh, thriving and, and companies such as uh, SpaceX and uh, Amazon and uh, OneWeb are trying to launch uh, um, tens of thousands of satellites to space to compete for place, frequencies and service. And that's actually changing everything. Mm. So, uh, Ron, uh, to you, um, a lot of money, a lot of time, it sounds like government to me. Uh, how, how do governments play in this? So, as uh, we know, Israeli government has an official space agency, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs collaborates with it, helping to uh, develop Israel's space uh, diplomacy around the world to add more cooperation, help in legislative means, in uh, education and also in uh, uh, startups and the economy. Tal, 
Uh, well, uh, I have a question to you, Yossi. Um, you are dealing with uh, very uh, sophisticated experiments in a very small environment of nanosatellites or a mini miniature laboratory in space. When do you foresee actual manufacturing in space in uh, significant uh, quantities of materials and getting them back to Earth? So this is a very uh, important task for us as Space Pharma is heading towards this production capability. Uh, we have the uh, design phase ready and we are ready to fly a little factory to orbit within a year and a half from now. It's all depend on the regulation that we need to meet. For example, if you will use NASA uh, launcher or US launcher, US based launcher, it will take us shorten time. If you will take a European launcher, it will take about two and a half years from now. Uh, it is not so far in the, in the life science uh, industry as well as the uh, space community, two and a half years are around the corner. And uh, this is uh, what I predict to have within two and a half years from now. Uh, Moshe, you were talking about uh, getting military technologies and uh, bringing them to the uh, civilian market, um, which is uh, contrary to what we've been talking here before, is taking civilian technologies and use them in the military arena. So um, how do you do that uh, when you have uh, possibly secretive uh, technologies, uh, cutting edge military technologies? How can you just sell it to the world. I think the whole domain of space belonged in the past to governments and was dealt by only by governments and big or major uh, security uh, organizations. And what we're seeing in the past few years is that the commercial world went way into there and has many more satellites from different types, radar satellites, imagery satellites, communication satellites and everything that can be used by commercial, uh, the commercial environment. Now, the commercial environment, unlike the military, doesn't always need very precise things, doesn't always need things that are exactly in a specific way like the military needs. Sometimes they would prefer a wide range of uh, satellites covering an area from different domains rather than one big satellite sitting there all the time. And that's, I think, what the commercial world brings in. And what so we sometimes, use, sometimes you downgrade the technology a little bit or adjust it to the civilian we adjust market? It. We don't downgrade it. We adjust it because the way ELTA worked for years, ELTA worked mainly on the sophistication of the algorithms that uh, analyze the whole picture. So what we do today is we take the algorithms that analyze the picture for uh, military purposes and we use them for civilian, for civilian purposes. It can be in change detection. It can be in classification. It can be in merging different types of sensors on the satellites. And that's something that's going to be done all over the world by commercial companies, and we're doing it too. Mm -hmm. Ron, um, is Israel perceived around the world as uh, maybe not a superpower in space, but a power in space? Well, I wouldn't say superpower, but uh, for sure a power. I think our uh, scientific achievements are well accounted around the world. And now when space has become more accessible, it influences agriculture, it in, can influence all infrastructure as we spoke in other panels. And I think it, it's, an, it's a new sphere in which we can create dialogues between Israel and other countries around the world that deal with these things. Mm -hmm. Tal, you see Israel as being a power in space? Yeah, uh, but uh, I also was, uh, want to emphasize the important role of cooperation and collaboration with other countries, uh, specifically in the region. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis UAE, for example, but also in the international arena. Just recently, we heard about the Artemis Accords, which NASA signed with a lot of countries, uh, and that would be a major step forward for Israeli technology, Israeli export, and uh, the influence on the global space market. Mm. Raz, I want to ask you um, a question from the ground. Um, selling space technologies, the kind of yours, um, is this being done the same way as any other technologies, or is it different? So it's very different. Um, there are technologies uh, that are considered sensitive. These technologies are governed by, actually, each country has its own classification for that. So Israel is no different. And uh, everything we do is, goes into a committee which needs to declassify it. 
actually even declassified is a classification. Mm. So uh, uh, we need to basically get the perspective of uh, uh, what we want to sell, what we want to uh, um, get to the market. And then we have not only the, the permission of the government, but we have the help and the assistance of the government. So it's a two-fold sword or two-sided two sword because we do have to go through a process. That's correct. But when you go through the process, you can get uh, help from these uh, uh, bodies in order to penetrate markets that you couldn't go to without them. Mm. Uh, you'll see you have the same uh, difficulties to sell yeah. your technology. Yeah. <clears throat> we are trying to hug new disciplines, new domains like pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, chemistry, flow chemistry, diagnostics in orbit that it is uh, related to the FDA. Uh, there is a specific uh, treaty between NASA and the FDA to fast and adopt technologies built in orbit to improve our life here on Earth, and that help us. But we must meet the regular space uh, treaties and to uh, prevent of doing things which are illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, in Israel, there are much more difficulties as we are in a region that it is under risk, uh, sustainable risk. Uh, not economical risk, but uh, intelligence, defensive, and that required us to have our antennas outside of Israel, and that's what we have, actually. Mm -hmm. Moshe, I want to ask you about um, transforming this and the technology from the military side to the civilian side. Is there a lot still to be uh, sold to the civilian side? First of all, there's a lot, and there are a lot of capabilities, but I'd also like to say we don't really sell technology. We provide solutions. So we sit with the customer and we understand the problem and then we can provide a whole solution end to end. It's not as if we take a technology and we give it to him and now you manage it. But we see the whole solution from end to end. And I can give an example. If you're a big uh, insurance company and you have tens of thousands of locations that you want to monitor continuously, we can provide you a solution that can monitor those sites to see ground movement or changes in buildings or things like that. That's a type of solution that can be provided. Now, we're not selling you a specific technology. Mm -hmm. It can be done from space. It can be done from uh, other sensors, airborne sensors. And it, can be, it, it could be done from both together. And it has the whole solution together with the algorithm inside. What about the bureaucratic side, as was mentioned here? Well, of course, we have to meet the regulations, and we cannot do anything that's unsecure for the state of Israel. And as we do, we have many discussions on that issue, and we make sure that we follow the regulations. Mm. Tom, do you think for Israel um, space uh, technology is the next thing? Uh, well, actually, it's not the next thing, because we are doing space for many years now. But uh, for sure, there is a, a, a space to grow. In this, uh, in this field of uh, technology and also in uh, the international arena of uh, organizations such as the United Nations uh, and other international uh, influential uh, organizations. Uh, and we could lead some uh, regional uh, efforts uh, to solve problems here on Earth. Mm -hmm. um, Ron, you have uh, requests, you have um, interesting, uh, you know, um communications from other countries regarding Israeli space? I think uh, Israeli as a leader in global innovation space is, is the cutting edge of innovation. And I think in this field, uh, there's a lot to offer, as we see here from the gentlemen here who represent part of the Israeli space industry. Let's hope for that. I thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, so much for this segment. Uh, we'll see you soon in the next one here at Inotech conference.